So starting this next unit, unit 1.3, we'll be looking at two-dimensional kinematics. Now, two-dimensional kinematics is necessary because objects tend to move in more than one dimension. Only a very small subset of objects follows motion in one direction. A car accelerating or decelerating on a straight line path, or an object falling without any horizontal motion, just falling straight down. These are examples of one-dimensional motion, but the universe is more complex than that. So we're going to expand into two-dimensional motion. And in reality, of course, things do move in three dimensions, but we're going to focus in on just two-dimensional motion. Three-dimensional motion is just another expansion of this same argument, but in the third dimension or Z dimension. So positions can be given in two-dimensional coordinate systems. So X, Y. So you see parentheses with a 0, 1, or a 5, comma, 3, or whatever. That means the position in those two coordinates. So an object, let's say, moves from a coordinate of 0, 0 to 5 meters minus 4 meters. What does that mean? Well, drawing an x, y axis here, I'm going to say north is positive y, south is negative y, east is positive x, West is negative x. The reason I do this is because this is displacement, so I can pretend it's moving on a map. It's two-dimensional, so it's not moving up or down vertically. So the object starts off at 0, 0, that's the origin, and moves to 5 meters, comma, minus 4 meters. So it moves 5 meters. First one is the x motion. It moves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 meters. And then minus four meters, one, two, three, four. So it, its final destination is here at five minus four. So the black line here shows you what its displacement is in two dimensions. Now, I've given that label D, small d, to represent what the distance is or the displacement, the magnitude of the displacement of this motion. Now, you're not given that directly. You're just told how much it moves in the x direction, its x displacement, and its y displacement. Now, because it starts off at 0, 0, the numbers here represent the x and y displacement. But it doesn't have to start off at 0, 0. If I started off at 1, 1, if I started off up here at 1, 1, you could see that d would be a different length, pointing in a different direction. So. To calculate the total displacement, the magnitude of displacement, we need to find the length of this vector. But that's actually not difficult to do because we know basic geometry. We know that the displacement was positive 5 meters. Oops. So this is delta x. And we know the displacement in the y direction was down negative 4 meters. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is delta y. Well, this is the same length here, delta y again. This is a right triangle. So we know what the sides are of the right triangle. We're trying to find the length of the hypotenuse. We just use the Pythagorean theorem. So the displacement is the square root of the sum of the squares of either side. So it's the square root of the displacement in x plus the square, uh, sorry, the square of the displacement in y, the square root of that entire thing. Right, that's just Pythagorean theorem. You might remember c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, where c is the length of the hypotenuse, a and b are the lengths of either side. This is the same thing, except I'm solving for the variable c here. I'm calling that the total displacement d. So that'll give the length of that vector. But remember, this is a displacement. So it is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. So I can get the magnitude of that displacement using this equation here the, from the Pythagorean theorem, but I also need to give you a direction because it's a displacement, it's a vector. So 
I have to figure out what the angle is. How far does it deviate from the positive x-axis? Assuming the positive x-axis is zero degrees, how much does it deviate from the positive x-axis? That's angle theta. Well, I know what, now I know what the hypotenuse is, but I know the opposite side of this angle theta is delta y, y displacement. The adjacent side is x. So I can use the tangent function, right? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So the inverse tangent function, I can use that to solve for theta. Now note, if you're doing this on your calculator, make sure that you are in degree mode when you do an inverse tangent. Otherwise, your calculator will give you radians. Uh, if you want to give your answer in radians, that's fine as long as you label it. If you give it in degrees, that's fine as long as you label it. Um, unless I specifically ask for it or the problem asks for it in radians or degrees. Degrees is more common. So let's actually do with these numbers this math. So I'll do it up here. So D. D is equal to the square root of the x displacement, which is final minus initial, so it's 5 meters minus 0 meters squared, plus the y displacement squared, which is minus 4 meters minus 0 meters. Again, final y position minus initial y position squared, square root of everything. Well, that's easy enough to do, right? 5 minus 0 is 0, so this is 5 meters squared plus minus 4 minus 0 is minus 4 meters squared. That's equal to a 5 squared is 25. This is the square root of 25 meters squared. The meters are squared too. The number has already been squared, but the unit has to be squared as well. Minus 4 squared, minus 4 times minus 4 is 16. So add to this 16. The meters are squared again, meters squared. Tw these are the same units, so I can add them. They're both meters squared. So 25 plus 16, so that's 35, 41. So the displacement D is equal to the square root of 41 meters squared. I think the square root of both terms, the meter squared, the square root of that is just meters. 41 squared is a little trickier. Turns out to be, plug that into your calculator, turns out to be about 6.4 meters. So that's the length of that vector D using the Pythagorean theorem. Now plugging in for the angle, just like this color here. Theta is the inverse tangent of delta, the y displacement over the x displacement. Well, the y displacement right here is minus 4. But since I'm just interested in this angle, I don't need to calculate what y is. Oh, we can leave it as minus 4. That's fine. x, 5 meters. Meters will cancel. So it's the inverse tangent of negative 4 over 5. Plugging in that in on your calculator, you get around minus 38.7 degrees. So minus 38.7 degrees means it's 38 degrees below the x-axis. So with this length, 6.4 meters, and this angle, I've given you the displacement vector from, the, from that motion in the x and y direction. It does help to draw these things out. 